joys and concerns. Let's continue with the word of prayer this morning. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we can come and bring our joys and bring our burdens and lay them at your feet. Lord, we ask that as we come into your presence in this hour that you will lead us, that you will guide us, that you will draw us closer to you, not just now, but forevermore. We ask all this in your most precious and holy name. Amen. If you'll please stand and join me in the call to worship as it's printed in your bulletin or on the screen. O oh Lord, we call to you, come quickly. May our prayer, praise and prayers be of utmost sincerity. Please stay standing and join us as we sing our praise music this morning. come before the Lord this morning, let us open our hearts and say together the prayer of confession. Gracious God, please forgive us. All too often we find ourselves in a state of spiritual impairment, or we let world mindset cause us to slip into compromised Christianity. We get so caught up in the business of our day-to-day -day lives 
that we develop a lukewarm attitude towards you. Help us to be open to every whisper of your word. Prepare us to obey your call on our lives, no matter when it comes or how difficult it may be. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please now have a time of silent confession. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please greet one another with a sign of peace. Hey, would the children please come forward? Hi, Clark. Good morning. Hey, Madeline, do you want to come up here and help me out? Just hold things up. All right, I have a little fun little test for you guys. A little bit we'll learn uh, about a few things. So here, hold this up, Madeline. So turn it around. That side has a hole in it. It's a little dusty because I haven't used it in a while. Uh, <laughs> okay, so this is a George... Foreman grill. You should be able to get this one. It's a George Foreman grill. Who do you think invented the George Foreman grill? Henry. George Foreman. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you can just lay it there. Okay. These are graham crackers. Does anybody know who invented the graham crackers? Yes. <laughs> graham cracker? Sort of. Close. Was it Mrs. Graham? Mr. Graham? All right, let me look up the first name. Oh, actually, 
it was a reverend, a pastor that invented this. This, the graham cracker was invented by Reverend Sylvester Graham. All right. Uh, this is Gillette razors. Do you know who invented the Gillette razor? Willem? Mr. Gillette. <laughs> His name was King Camp Gillette. All right, girls. Morgan, what do you call this? Aaliyah, Aaliyah, yeah, right. And the, the long name for it, you're right, is a leotard, right? Do you know who invented this? Leo, no. Jules, I don't know if that's a woman or a man, guessing a woman, I don't know that for sure. Jules Leotard. <laughs> I had no idea about that. Okay, who invented the Phillips screw and what came after was the screwdriver? Yeah, it was Philip, and his name was Henry F. <laughs> Henry F. Phillips. Okay, uh, I don't have this in my bag, but a Ferris wheel. Who invented the Ferris wheel? Uh, his name was George Washington Gale Ferris Jr. Invented the Ferris wheel. I don't know. I don't know. What kind of an organ do we have up there? Well, if it's a Hammond, if it's a Hammond organ, <laughs> Lawrence Hammond invented that. And uh, I had one other one I wanted to share. Oh, I know what it was. It was my all-time favorite, favorite, favorite invention. Oh, wait a minute. Here's one more. Who, invited, who invented the loofah? I have no idea. Yeah, that was just a trick. <laughs> okay. And this is my favorite invention. This is a Hershey Kisses are in this bag. That's right. Yes, you may have some. Do you know who invented this? <laughs> this was invented by Milton Hershey. If you ever go out to Hershey World, you'll hear the whole story about Milton Hershey and how he invented the Hershey Kiss. So the whole point of all this is just for me to tell you that all these things that I shared, shared with you have a name and they have a purpose, right? They, there, there's a reason for their invention. Same way with you guys. God created you. You were given a name. And you also have a purpose. And you probably have a whole bunch of purposes. But God has created you to do wonderful things. God created you to be smart and kind and creative and athletic and um, uh, you have all kinds of wonderful gifts. Uh, if you can think of just like say one thing, maybe a couple of you, what do you think God created you to be? Well, an obvious one is a son or a daughter. Uh, what else has God created you to be? All right, Henry, you did not raise your, raise your hand, but I can see already that God has created you to be a fisherman. Henry is a wonderful fisherman. So, um, and through fishing, you can learn all sorts of things. And one thing is that he does is he teaches kids how to fish. And he is kind. He taught you how. That's right, Braden. Right. So God creates you to do certain things for different people. And, um, and that was one of the things that, um, that God created Henry to be. Can you think of something else? Morgan, what did you think? God created you to be a gymnast. You're right. And through gymnastics, you can do a lot of things. You can tell people about Jesus. You can, you can, um, you can show people what good sportsmanship is like. Uh, you, can, you, know, you can do a lot of good things. You can make friends. Um, so there's a lot of good things you can do through all your activities. So you just got to think about what's God want me to do today? And you can do that. And you don't know. That's right. When you wake up in the morning, you don't always know what God wants you to do today, right? You don't know. So you just kind of have to live into it. All right. How about I say a prayer, and then, um, and then Grace Lee will pass them out. And you hold them. Gracious God, I thank you for these children. I thank you that you've given them a name, and then you've given them a purpose. Um, I pray that they always be sensitive to your presence. 
um, and that as they go forward into life, they invent wonderful things and take care of your people and serve in ways that we aren't even aware of yet. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Thanks, guys. You can take some kisses, and then you can go right back to your seat. I wanted to give a little bit of a preface to our scripture reading for today uh, because it's out of my own weakness that I want to do it. My own weakness is that I have a horrible time with names. I forget names, and when I'm reading a story, I have to underline them and you know keep track of. But uh, this particular scripture is not really too hard to figure out because there's only three characters. There's God in this story. There's a man named Eli. Eli was the older man. He was the priest of the temple, uh, and he was also a judge. So that's, um, that's Eli. And then the other one is Samuel, and Samuel is a young boy. And uh, the story about Samuel that comes before the scripture we're going to read, is my microphone making a lot of extra noise? No, it sounds like it is for me. Okay, I'll carry on then. Uh, so, um, so Samuel's mother, Hannah, suffered from infertility. She was really struggling to get pregnant. At one point, she said to the Lord, if you give me a child, I will dedicate him to you and to your service. So when she eventually did get pregnant with Samuel, she did just that. She dedicated him to the Lord by taking him to the temple where Eli was the priest and gave him to uh, Eli along with a, three a three-year-old bull uh, some flour and some wine. <laughs> so I guess that's what it takes if you want to pass your child on to somebody. But, um, but anyhow, that, that's how this, this story, the stage is set for this story. So now uh, Samuel is, after he was weaned, she took him there. He's in the temple being raised by Eli. And now Don will come up and he's going to read the scripture for us. Good morning, everyone. I got to find my place in here. I, I have a regular Bible here where I usually have it on my my uh, Kindle, but I found out I have uh, fire sticks in my TV, and it extended to my Kindle, and I don't know. <laughs> How to get out of Amazon Fire on my Kindle. So we're going to read it right out of the book for you today. Uh, it comes from 1 Samuel, as you probably have guessed. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In these days... The word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak he could hardly see, he was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me? But Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. So he went back and laid down. Again the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me? My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. 
Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called, Samuel! And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thank you, Don. There are several lectionary readings for every Sunday, and one of the lectionary readings for today is this reading from 1 Samuel. So me always thinking about the wonderful, bright, fun, faithful children that we have here in our congregation, I decided to explore this passage. Over and over during that famous night, Samuel heard his name called out. He couldn't escape it, and yet he couldn't figure it out. Fortunately for Samuel, even though Eli didn't hear God's call himself, Eli came to the correct conclusion that it was God who was calling as we read in scripture, Eli explained to Samuel that the voice was in fact God calling and that Samuel needed to respond. I thank God for spiritual mentors like Eli. Poor Eli, though, was not at the top of his game. He was in a spiritual slump. Uh, he is described spiritually as one without vision whose eyesight had begun to grow dim. According to scripture, Eli had neglected his own children, and he failed to raise them to understand and to know and to follow through on the responsibilities that they had before the Lord. In light of this, he was feeling the burden of his neglect towards his own family. Fortunately for Eli, God gave him a second chance when Samuel's uh, parents decided to take him to the temple for Eli to teach and to raise. When you read on past of this particular scripture and you read on into Samuel, you'll see that Eli eventually emerged as an entirely noble man in spite of his history, his children's sinful history and their behaviors of sin and neglect. I think this is a very comforting point to bring out because I think that any parent or teaching adult is well aware that efforts at moral and spiritual education of a child do not always produce the desired effect that we were hoping for. Furthermore, I don't believe it's true that the sins of children can always be laid on the parent or those of, who are helping to raise that child. Nevertheless, Eli could have done better at spiritually leading his own family, and I think he also knew God was giving him a redemptive chance. It's probable the moment that Samuel went to Eli in the middle of the night that Eli suspected that the Lord speaking to Samuel was also a test for himself. Perhaps Eli thought if he spiritually directed Samuel to the Lord, the Lord might right the wrongs that Eli committed towards his own children. I've brought a lot of attention to Eli just in this last couple minutes, I know, but uh, the primary character in scripture is not Eli, but it is rather Samuel. The emphasis is on the wondrous manner in which the Spirit of God spoke to the as yet unsuspecting child. Samuel is the child star here. Eli was certainly instructional and encouraging, but it was the boy, Samuel, in all his inexperience and naivete, who bravely chose to do exactly what Eli told him to do as he responded to God's, God's voice 
saying, speak, your servant is listening. I knew, but I was affirmed once from a man named David Guzik in a video presentation that children are quite capable of serving God. I knew that, but it's good to hear that from other people. He instructed that there are several examples in the Bible of children serving God. In fact, the scripture that we just read was actually the third time that Samuel ministered to God. Samuel dabbled in ministry two other times prior to this instance when he was actually called by God. In both chapter 2, verse 11, and chapter 2, verse 18, in two separate instances, we read that the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord. According to scripture, children also preach. In Exodus, the Lord spoke to Moses and instructed him to anoint Aaron, who was, you know, one of the, the big shots in history. He was the father of the priesthood in all of Israel. And he said to anoint him as well as Aaron's sons so that they also may preach and be anointed as priests. And then in 2 Kings verse, uh, chapter 5, verses 1 to 3, an Israeli girl, just a girl, was captured by the Syrians, and she was taken in as a slave. She served as a slave to the Syrians' general's wife. When the Syrians' general, general uh, wife, uh, or when, when the general was distraught with leprosy, this little Israeli girl slave shared with him a message of the healing power of the Lord God and how he could be healed. Her message brought healing and salvation to the Syrian general. Children are also quite capable of praising God. In the Psalm of David, chapter 8, David assures through song that the greatness of God is sung by all people, not just adults, by all people, which included children. David's song reads, from the lips of children and infants, the Lord has ordained praise. And then, of course, there's the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem with the Palm Sunday crowds that we celebrated not too long ago. And the scripture reads that the Palm Sunday crowd included children who shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. So children can also pray. Uh, this Guzik man that I talked about, he also shared a story that I will not forget. His name, uh, the story is about a man named Edward Payson Hammond. And I think I actually stuck a picture up there of him. He was said to be the greatest evangelist who ever lived that actually served children. He was an American-born theologian, preacher, and author of hymns. Prior to his ministry with children, in 1860, he was asked to preach in a church in Scotland. When he went into the church vestibule to get his coat, he found that the door to the vestibule was locked. And so he knocked on the door, and a little girl answered. And she said, it's just me and a few of my lasses in here. And just then, he heard a little girl praying the most beautiful prayer that he had ever heard, and tears filled his eyes. At that point, his ministry changed. He became the children's evangelist, and he helped found the Children's Special Services Mission, winning children to Christ all over the world. Later in the late 1860s, in, at the London's Metropolitan Tabernacle, he preached to 8,000 children in that tabernacle, even though they said there were only 6,000 seats. All of these 8,000 little lives and many, many more later on were changed because, because Edward Payson Hammonds first heard a little girl pray the most beautiful prayer he had ever heard. Without a doubt, God has a real and a rich place in God's kingdom for children. God prepares you and he prepares me to serve a variety of people in a variety of ways. Not all of us are called to minister children. However, 
with every infant or child baptism that we celebrate right here in this church. As a collective church congregation, we promise to provide programming and care for the children we are blessed to have among us. Now with VBS being just around the corner, we can ask God to bless, protect, and even yet, yes, we can even ask God to use children in spectacular spiritual ways. This is tremendously important when we need the word of God sown into the hearts of these impressionable children, some of which we might only interact with one week, that's only a couple nights and an evening for only five evenings. We need to pray, we need to plan, prepare, and we need to execute swiftly and effectively because this might be our only interaction with some of these kids, period. This might be it coming up. No pressure, Aaron, but this might be it. God's call to all faithful people is the theme in Samuel. It's just not the call to Samuel, of course. It's the call to all people. It's about God calling innocent, inexperienced children or adults like Eli who have had many years to slip up and make some poor decisions, but God still finds that that person is the exact person that God needs for the job. This message absolutely applies to us and the ways in which God initiates opportunities in the lives of men, women, and children today. Like Samuel, God chases down people God needs for a certain mission. God comes calling and speaks at any age, at any point in life, with or without any prior experience. Now, I think in all that I've shared this morning, if there's an elephant in the room, I would say that the elephant is how. It's not, not anything that I've said is really controversial. Uh, but the, the question is, how does God speak to us today? I don't know of anyone who has heard God speaking in the same kind of voice that you and I speak to each other. For the most part, there are no bright lights or burning bushes or the parting of the sea. Instead, God speaks to us in very natural ways. Children and adults recognize God's calling as a deep sense inside of us that God wants us to do something for a person in need or to stop an activity that is wrong. It's a sense that God is telling us something through a Bible story that we've read or a story that we've heard or a feeling of comfort during a crisis or perhaps it's when you walk outside and you just soak in the awe of natural beauty. Maybe you sense God is calling you through something you've listened to maybe a conversation that you've had with someone, maybe a sermon or a song or an event or a prayer. Something we learn from Eli is that whenever God calls in any one or several of the ways that I just mentioned, remember that God expects a response, like maybe just simple, like, thank you, Lord, or keep near me, Lord, or speak for your servant is listening. And then I think comes perhaps the hardest part of all, which is discernment as to whether the message in question is from God or if it's our own creation. Discerning of the, the voice of God, I think, is tremendously difficult, and that's why I titled my message, Speak, Lord, for Your Servant is Trying. In my own life, uh, when I get into these times whenever I'm trying to discern God's call in my life, I have a, a few guidelines that I'll share with you. If what I think of, um, of is God's call, um, when I think about it, if it's inconsistent with the ways of Jesus, then I can pretty much check it off as it's not God's call. Second is to pray about because praying in a variety of forms is the only way, really, that we can communicate with God. And there's lots of forms of prayer. So it could be through the corporate prayer, uh, you know, with a, a large group of people. It could be personal. It could be meditation. It could just be being aware of living in God's presence. 
Um, but however you pray, that's the only way to really enhance the fellowship with God. And that there are, however, many ways that God can communicate with us through scripture, through daydreams, through visions, through meditation, prayerful listening, and imagining that we're becoming part of what God is calling us to be until it actually becomes real. Uh, and then, of course, there's uh, spiritual direction, as there was for uh, Samuel when he had the spiritual director of Eli. So there, there, there's, you know, lots of ways that God can speak to us. Uh, and lastly, uh, I would say be patient, because some or most of the time we only know for sure in retrospect that what we thought was God's call actually was. Not that our own ideas are sinful. I mean, we have great ideas, and I think God is proud of our great ideas, but sometimes perhaps we're just not quite there, and that's okay. So I think maybe it's not until you actually get to look back and see the fruits of your action that we are assured that what we thought was God's call truly was. And I think that K-Bash is probably one of this case in point for me. It was only just a year and a half ago that we were discerning the call to let the old traditional hour before church Sunday school die and give birth to Kabash. We sat in session and said, what do you all think about giving this a try, giving what we know now as Kabash a try? With session's full support and a wing and a prayer, Kabash was launched a year and a half later, we now can glance back to see the fruit of our labor and say, by golly, it was God's call in the dark for us to have Kabash. Thank God. I really appreciate this congregation, and I've come to real, I mean, I've always known that, but in, especially in this last uh, year and a half, when we're trying all these different things in Kabash, you know, we're burning palms in the back and the church is filling up with, with smoke and, um, you know, people are coming out like, whoa, what are you burning back there, you know, and um, just all the different things when we've had the kids participating in worship. And you all have been very, very supportive. So never for a second have I ever doubted your support of the beautiful children in our congregation. Never, ever have I doubted it. Thank you. And never, ever for a moment have I ever doubted the stronghold that God has on all of your lives. So when you sense that tug at your heartstring, God calling you to step into faith and to do something or another, just swing that heart's door wide open and let God work in you and don't make any excuses. And I'll make a promise that I'll try my hardest to do the same. Together, we will allow God to move in us, to bring blessings to our life, and to bring blessings to all the people that we serve. Amen. Would the ushers please come forward to receive our offering?
for the people in this congregation and that they have brought forth their tithes and their offerings. We pray that we use these in ways that are most pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 You may be seated. May the Lord be with you as we lift up our hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God. We invite all to this communion table who believe and worship in Jesus Christ. Coming to this table is a gift given to all of us, undeserving as we are, yet who come in faith, repentance, and love. We come broken, seeking reconciliation with God and neighbor and trusting in Jesus Christ for cleansing and renewal. Come, the table is set. Let us pray. Lord, this is your feast spread by your command, attended by us at your invitation, and blessed by your own word. Lord, remind us of your last supper with your disciples. Help us recall your death for us on the cross so that we may look up and know that you are the risen Savior among us, so that we may look around and rejoice in our fellowship with one another, and so that we may look forward and hope to the coming of your kingdom and the heavenly banquet. Jesus, in your name we pray, amen. On the night that Jesus was arrested, he gathered all his disciples together in the upper room, and he took bread and he broke it, and he gave thanks to the Lord God. And he said to his disciples, eat this bread. And when you eat this bread, remember me. And in the same way, he took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of salvation. It is the cup of new and everlasting covenant that is shed for you and for all people who believe in me. And when you drink this cup in the same way as the bread, please remember me. Would the elders come forward to share this meal. And you, when you receive it, please hold on to it so that we can all eat together.
the bread of life for you. the cup of salvation for you. Let us pray. God of grace, you created everything for your glory, and we are grateful. You gave food and drink to men, women, and children for their enjoyment, sustenance, and as a cause for thanksgiving. And to us, you have given spiritual food and spiritual drink, bestowing on us the promise of eternal life and that heavenly feast that we look forward to. Above all, we thank you for the power of your love. We thank you for Maria Klingerman's life and her service here in the church. We trust that you have already received her into the arms of your mercy, love, and everlasting life. We also pray for Gary as he ventures through life without her. 
We have lots of praises. We praise you for Clark and Peggy and for Madeline, for Hannah, and for their birthdays. Uh, what joy they all bring to us, and we are grateful. We are also very grateful for little baby Reese and that uh, Susie and Rick and their families are all well. Um, so much to be thankful for after some uh, challenging times, to say the least. We also praise you for all the new graduates that we are about to celebrate. And we thank you for a vacation Bible school, and it's exciting to be in the planning stages and to be looking forward to such a fun week. So I ask that you uh, be in the hearts and the minds and, and the hands of the people that are serving and uh, help us to be perfectly ready for these great children who are coming our way. We also pray for Scott McCandless. Uh, you have brought him so far and done such miraculous things in his life, and we have no doubt that you will continue. So as he goes to the clinic on Tuesday and they do a workup, we pray that they figure out how to deal with this virus and to give him the quality of life that he so deserves and we so enjoy seeing him have. We also uh, just lift up, I'll pause for a moment, we lift up the people who are on the hearts of the people sitting here in the congregation. Please hear our prayer, Lord, and we also will pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join in our closing hymn number 589, Here I Am, Lord.
needs us, and that'll be somewhere out there as we go out to the people who need us. We can go in peace because we know that we go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.